Before we begin today, I'd like to thank the publisher Pleism and the developers Blast Mode and MP2 Games for providing me with a key to play this game. Without them, this review would not be possible because I would not have the freaking game. So, be honest with me, do you like Metal Slug? I like Metal Slug, and to be perfectly honest with you, I don't trust people who don't like Metal Slug. Metal Slug is great, it defined my kind of arcade experience that I really enjoy. I really enjoy beat em ups and Metal Slug. I also enjoy some shooting, but I don't really enjoy fighting games. So, but to me, the defining experience was definitely Metal Slug, which is why I've been keeping an eye on this game for quite a while this mighty goose game. And basically because it looks sort of like a modern Metal Slug, obviously it doesn't have that sort of handcrafted look that makes it feel like every single frame of the game is literally a painting. This was done by some small modern indie developers using small modern tools, not a bunch of a dozen or so Japanese developers that this was just their main job to put that in arcades and they were like considered big developers at the time so obviously some limitations would show but it still looked fantastic I mean it might not be Metal Slug level but the pixel art still looked fantastic and the game looked really fun and I wanted to try it out so quite a few months later was it a year since I saw this well, it got released and I got a key and I'm here to talk to you that this game is amazing. Of course, Metal Slug isn't the only influence at playing this game. I also think there's a bit of Mega Man in it, as well as a few ideas from other games from other genres thrown into it to make it its own special little thing and I'll explain what I mean to you right now. When it comes to comparisons to Metal Slug, this game is a very arcade-ish experience. There is a rank at the end of each level, but you don't get to play the entire game like an arcade mode uh, straight from the first level to the last level. Instead, you always have to pick a level from a level select screen. Uh, but the levels themselves, they play sort of like Metal Slug. Because when you start a level, you get a blaster, on your, one of your arms, you play as the goose, of course, and your shutter sort of shoots little pellets, little bullets that are sort of like the pistol from Metal Slug, and then there are various different weapon power-ups that you can pick up, and if you pick up a power-up, then the narrator goes like machine gun, because you've got a machine gun just like Metal Slug, and also if you touch any other power-up for any other weapon, you lose your current weapon, and you get another weapon, and they have limited ammunition, just like Metal Slug, and just like Metal Slug, and just like in Metal Slug, there are fixed points in the levels where you can get into vehicles. Vehicles who are, some of them are just blatant copies of vehicles from Metal Slug and they even look like vehicles from Metal Slug. The developers didn't even try to hide what influenced them. Hell, if you get close to an enemy and you press the attack button, instead of shooting, the goose just beats the shit out of them. Just like the knife in Metal Slug. When it comes to Mega Man, its influences are a bit harder to pin down because they don't come as strong as the Metal Slug ones but I think it comes down to the level design and, let's say, architecture of the level, which emphasizes platforming and side exploration a lot more than the original Metal Slug, which of course had to be played in an arcade. The levels also wouldn't look out of place in a Mega Man game if you take a look at how they are drawn. They look more like tile sets than the original Metal Slug, which had more of a feel like every single thing was placed in its own unique place, because it was overall a very short condensed arcade experience, so SNK could conceivably do that. Also, I don't know if you could call it Mega Man influenced, but the game comes with its own upgrade system. And different, instead of a grenade, like in Metal Slug, you get all of the sort of different abilities that you can pick and choose, which one you want to bring with you into missions. It's very different from Mega Man, which was all about having all of these abilities and finding out which ability is the weak point of a boss or of a particular segment, but I think you could still kind of consider this sort of customization a bit influenced by Mega Man or perhaps by more modern action character games, whichever one you prefer, I suppose. Now, when it comes from a few tricks that are harder to pin down but which obviously showed up in other games, we have a dodge button that allows you to instantly dodge through enemy attacks and you also got companions to help you around the game. Though unfortunately they do very little damage while the goose does a lot of damage, so the best companion turns out to be the one that constantly drops machine gun power-ups all the time because why would you need the small damage output of a companion when you can just get a companion that can turn your already high damage output even higher. But I still think that's a nice idea, especially since 
if you try to play co-op, your co-op partner will play with this character and thus have to get more into a support role than an equal value role, which is an interesting dynamic. And also I have to admit that I didn't really went very deep into the companion system to see what else could be done with it. Maybe there are secret companions, I know there are secret companions that I could unlock that would be even better, but generally I just prefer to have the machine gun power on me. Ah, yes, you also get a DJetic pause menu, which is basically a smartphone that the goose held, holds up that has a shop and you can buy any weapon power up using in-game currency, as well as vehicles. Of course, you can't just buy everything there, especially vehicles, they are usually very limited, but the fact that you can just summon different power-ups at any point using a shop really changes the dynamic of the game since you could conceivably break the design of the current part of the game that you're in. Uh, of course, my favorite one is, and the one that I saved for last, because it's my favorite one uh, and I like to finish it. I'm the kind of person who eats the best fry for last, who saves the best fry for last. It's the Goose Trigger. Yep, that's right, it's just a Goose Trigger. What does the Goose Trigger does? I don't know if that's the name, but I called it the Goose Trigger. And I'll tell you what the Goose Trigger does. It makes you invincible and powers up your weapon to an absolute insane degree and it's just really really cool and if you pick up this game let me tell you something do not save the goose trigger there are a lot of situations in which you could die that you can easily just stomp everything by just triggering the goose trigger it, you just don't save that up just goose it up and it's absolutely insane when you use them your weapons get super stronger and the, if you kill enough enemies really really fast or powerful enemies the, the entire game slows down and has all sorts of effects on screen which you know might bother you it might be bothering you know depending on what kind of person you are but since i'm an epic gamer guy who just has no brain i just really enjoy just activating it and shooting the shit out of everything while everything slows down and it's just carnage that you can even understand what's going on on the screen and it's amazing i love i love the goose trigger okay i unabashedly love the goose trigger this is pretty much enough reason for you to buy this game. If there's one thing that caught my attention, perhaps even more on the same level as the Metal Slug, which I love influences in this game, is definitely the humor. The humor of this game is just my kind of humor. It is simple, it is wholesome, it is fun, and most importantly, it doesn't try to be ironic or drag too much attention to itself. Obviously, the main joke that carries itself from beginning to end is the fact that you're playing as a basically a bounty hunter space goose which has giant cannon arms and mechanical legs and stuff. But the game never tries to, in dialogue, draw attention to that like, oh, you're a goose, you're so wacky, ha ha ha, no, no, no. It just plays it straight, you know? In the very first level, the very first partner you unlock is called Regular Duck. And it is just a regular duck. When it showed up, I just couldn't stop laughing for minutes. Maybe I just have the sense of humor of a five-year-old, but that's just how I like my humor. It doesn't try to be ironic, it doesn't try to over-explain itself, it just plays a very funny sequence straight and lets you to realize the humor in that. So, in conclusion, Mighty Goose is... Wait, hold up, I know what you're probably thinking. This is a pretty damn short review if I'm going to conclude it right now, but I guarantee you there is a very good reason for it. And that's because Mighty Goose is a pretty damn short game, clocking for me at a little under 2 hours. That doesn't mean it's a bad game, it's just a short game, though due to its structure I wouldn't call it an arcade type game either, even though as I've said plenty in this review, the Metal Slug influence is very clear. It wasn't until I reached the second boss and got thrown to the school sequence where I had to fight on top of it, and trust me, this game is absolutely packed with great bosses and cool sequences, that my brain finally aligned with what kind of game this is. Sure, arcade games had these sequences as well, but for me, this is more like those PS1 slash PS2 short action games that were well, short, but also immensely replayable, like a roller coaster ride collection of the best hits of gameplay that the developers managed to make, and that's mighty goose for me. All killer, no filler. So I feel you should be aware of that, and that though there are ranking systems and a new game plus mode to encourage replayability, a long RPG style journey, this is not. I also feel like I should warn you that this game has no difficulty options, but while the game tends towards a bit more of a hardcore side and some early reviews mentioned a lack of checkpoints, I thought personally that the checkpoints are plentiful, uh, so that's probably some early bug weirdness, 
that got patched or maybe rebalanced. And honestly, if you use the Goose trigger as much as you can, you can easily break the game in half. So I don't think that's too much of an issue. Overall, Mighty Goose is a great throwback to the old classics with some modern sensibilities thrown in. And if you get in this ride knowing you're in for a roller coaster of a game, then you have a great time setting this Goose loose.